Well, here on the show, we've been talking about teams that are 2-0, and and I don't think we can get very far down the road without mentioning Marcus Kaufman and PSJ North. The Raiders, man, hey, just easy does it, man. 2-0 and like that. They beat down to 27-6, allowed 134 yards. Hell, Bo Adams had more than that in about three quarters. That guy's tough, man. Yes. He can run. And, and the thing about that team is – that Coach Coffin's doing on the defensive side too, so it's not just a one-sided affair where they're just scoring up a ton of points. Right. You know, they're 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 uh, running the ball well, mm -hmm. and their defense is is playing uh, not shutout defense, but pretty darn yeah, close. Pretty close, man. I'll tell you the what: nine points and seven, sixteen, two games. You know, they've got about six guys back who have played on that defense, and I like Fuentes at quarterback because he's athletic. You know, they for for years they've had guys who could run a little bit pass a little bit. They're like East, they're not going to throw it that much. Yeah. You know, he's not going to throw the ball that much. But he's athletic enough to do it. And I, like I said, I don't know if Adams is still wearing 24, but he's, he's a candidate. I just like to call them candidates here in the beginning. But, God, he's got some numbers, 250, 161. He's been, he's been killing him, yeah. man. Uh, he has, you know, he, he has long runs, but mm -hmm. then he can also sustain it on just, you know, ground and pound. Because he's not, he's not a skinny little flyer. No. He's got some meat on him. He's a strong kid. No, he's a good-looking athlete. They got a bunch of them over there. PSJ North is, you know, quite frankly, now with Baylor having taken a hit, I mean, why wouldn't you consider the Raiders in the conversation as a contender for that district title? Yeah, yeah. I mean, especially the way, uh, you know, uh, the way they're playing is, you know, he, they're complimentary. Their defense is playing, you know, great defense. Yeah. It's setting the offense up in great spots, and, and you know that's what you're hoping for. I mean, you know, they got Turner. they got confidence right now, and of course they take the bye. Yeah. <laughs> Sucks for them. Yeah. yeah. Well, what, what about Donna now? I mean, you know, some people were saying, and we've been saying it for years. Well, Donna, the split, and Donna North, North is here, Donna's here. When's he? Uh, Donna has not had the best start to the season. No. They got to win the first week, but then they didn't do much against uh, PSJ North. You know, and look, not defending anybody, but how do you replace Amante Bowen, Doherty, it's three thousand yards, in, man? You, know, to, yeah. you lose all that stuff, all that, and then yeah. you're you're expecting them to be, you know, we're gonna pick up on that district championship where we were. And I'm not saying they won't, but right now they've got a little work to do. Uh, they've got the game this week against La Jolla. Now La Jolla has played a couple of hard matches, man. They haven't scored a lot of points, but and they're 0 2. But you know they've tough been a team, a tough Roma team. Yeah, they've been in the the games. I mean, you know they they may not have scored against Roma, but they didn't give up at 16. Yeah. So they're the same typical scrap and claw and whoop on you La Jolla team. And so let's see what they can do with Donna. Boy, back in the day, that would have been one of the best games yeah. in the valley. Remember? Very much so. Yeah, yeah, back when La Jolla wore them black uniforms yeah. and just hit everybody. Hitting, they were hitting the refs. No, I'm kidding. They weren't. But anyway, uh, so Donna La Jolla. Which one of those teams wants to take a step forward before district? Mm -hmm. uh, I still think Donna's going to be a good football team. I really do. I still think Sherryland's going to be a good football team because I saw them show character of a winner against Edinburgh North over there at uh, Richard R. Florida Stadium. They got up to a lead. Uh, it wasn't much in the first half, 3-3. Three, three. Uh, Edinburgh North came back and scored twice within a two-minute span of the third quarter or the fourth quarter. But Sherry Lane got it done, man. They came back and scored, and Blake Klein was one of the reasons. That guy is super quick. If you haven't read, he's got an article on the website. Yeah, not yeah. Not Sherry Lane, not in decline. Not in decline. I like that cleverness. Yeah. I've made that up all by myself, yeah. man. God hey, man. but, you know, the kid, he, he, he's got size. He, yeah, he's a little bit. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But, you know, speed. Is right. Quickness, speed, hands. He's got great instincts, and they run that jet sweep, man. I went to bed last night late, and I was thinking to myself, what can you do off of that jet sweep? Because after you run it a while, you either give it or you, or you run the counter, right? And we just saw it right That's now. right. You can throw off. And I was racking my brain. My wife was probably like, what's wrong with you over there? You can throw off it. We just saw Notre Dame throw off it. Okay, so what happens is, and here's the, the danger in doing that, is you're real close to the line of scrimmage, man. So you've got to stop and pop, okay? Yeah. But it's a throw back. I would suggest you can also run a reverse off it, but here's the problem with that. It takes a while in that action anyway. You're giving the defense a lot of time to come up, right? So I don't know. But that's, I, it, that's if they're over-pursuing. If they're over-pursuing, you can pretty much do anything you want. On how about a fake reverse? Here's the thing. You've got to run the jet sweep five or six times, give it three or four times, run the counter. When does the quarterback throw off it? Because you can do that. Think about it. It's like the old wishbone, okay? So you pop the fake to the fullback. Instead of continuing on with the procession, you just stand up and you toss it to a tight end. What's the only problem there? We ain't got no tight ends no more. Yeah. Yeah. So maybe a slot number, but someone, yeah. you know, what I mean, slot receiver, yeah, but but you know, and you have to remember, we watch a lot of video, so uh, yeah. X's and O's, X's here and O's here. Here's here's my point: the jet sweep is one of those things that you can put a package in for, but after a while, you know, what else can you do off it? Let's see what the next iteration is because it takes advantage of speed, but ironically, it's not vertical; mm -hmm. it's horizontal. And for those of you who have not played this game, 
Think about how hard it is to be running horizontally to the line of scrimmage, get the ball and turn up Stop and be it, able yeah. to make a move because a lot of people would be like, I have to go this way, bam, you're done. Yeah. But I mean, Blake Klein, man, he was like he was skating on ice. He was, uh, uh, pop, 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 pop. He's, he's tough, man. And it makes him even better because Edgar Alanis has had a shoulder. Uh, he's not 100%. He still made some tough catches. He's not scared to take a lick. Uh, but he had to do a lot of things, Klein on himself. I liked Alan Alvarez. I thought he's a good, quick little runner too. No, Sierra Land impressed me, I'll tell you why. They didn't make any mistakes. They didn't turn the ball over. They, they lost one turnover, if you want to call it that, the longest onside kick in the history of the world. <laughs> Edinburgh North, Pooch kicks down to the 15. It bounces in front of the receiver and choom, comes back like a rocket. Here comes uh, Justin Guerra, 25, who's a great track guy. He, he almost slides on the ground and catches the ball right over his head. It was a great play, man. And North went on to score from there. They took the lead. Yeah, they took the lead on that, but then Sherry Lund, re resilient. Yeah, they were resilient, and Klein got open, and uh, Allen found him, and Klein caught the ball at the two or three, and he said, Whoop, and the defense went, oh, and he went, touchdown, and we win the game. Yeah, where, they stopped where, North where twice. put him in, in Sherry Lynn Lore, like, you know, Scotty Meyer and Myers. Uh, yeah, like, where do you put him in? Well, I mean, he came on last year and had a ton of, he had 400-something yards, 20-something catches. I think he has a chance to be one of the best. I really do, because the thing is, they need him to be. Yeah. It's not, they don't have as many weapons as they used to. They don't have the depth they used to. They don't have as big a line. So a guy like that is going to be called upon to do great things. I think he has the potential to be one of the best. I was very impressed with him. I was impressed with, hey, little, little Tom Ez. He's not so little. Mm -hmm. He's been lifting. He got big, man. He grew. He was killing. He had 15 tackles the first game. Wow. Didn't do as much uh, against North, but I'll tell you what he is, a good left footed kicker. Mm -hmm. Yeah, he made his extra points and made his field goals. North missed a field goal. North had three turnovers in the second half. North did not cash its opportunities. When Sherilyn was given the breaks, they went and scored off them, and that's why they won there. As I wrote, they were a little cleaner. Now, here's the kicker on this. North now 0-2, and they're going to go against the Harlem South team that's 2-0. Another one of those 2-0 teams that we're talking about, and me, people think that's an aberration, but I, I'm not sure, man. I really think that they're pretty solid. Yeah. You have to say they are. Well, they played a tough PSJ team. PSJ is playing well. I Trey Wajardo, though, man, he's a, he's a numbers machine. That guy's putting them up, boy. Yeah. And now North, I mean, if you look at their schedule right now, it's not going to get easier. They're, they have to play this 2-0 team, and then they're going to play Bella. Week 23rd, one. right, the start of district season. Or week one of district season. Yeah, yeah. It, uh, it is quite frankly a, a, a rough muster for the first month of the season. They must hang in there. They have the talent. Christian Espinosa got unwound in the second half and had some great runs. He had a couple of near misses. They, they really, on that last drive when they were trying to come back, they had the ball. They had the throw. Uh, they didn't come up with it. It was a drop. But they had a first down at the 40. All they needed was a field goal for, for their kicker who got some legs. So uh, what you've got to do, and, and Renee Sines said it after the game, we just got to keep believing, okay, because we got the talent and we've got some lineage here. We've got some kids. We, we can win. We can win the district. But they just have to believe because when you lose a game that you were ahead in twice, then the kids may start to go, man, I didn't see it. I was on the sidelines. I didn't see it, okay. I didn't feel it. And I feel like, you know, you can, you can gauge the body language and the biorhythms of the kids when they've quit. That team ain't quit, and so South better look out. But North better look out. It's our John Jakes battle, North versus South, because the Hawks are tough, man. I want to see how good they are. They come in and beat North, man, then we're going to have to recalibrate that whole district down there yeah. in the murderer's row, man, because we counted them out at the beginning. Some people did, not That's me. That's the thing with a new coach. You don't know what to expect. You don't a know bump and a buzz, yeah. probably, but maybe sometimes rampant confusion, and you go one and nine. Yeah. Who knows? Well, they're 2-0 and oh right now. So is St. Joe, and St. Joe didn't score no 64 points, but they only gave Lyford one touchdown. Yeah. That's an improved defensive effort. Yeah. Yeah. But they're going to go against a real Hondo team that we didn't think, you know, well, at least I didn't think was going to be able to. I admit I was did. thinking Lincoln. Yeah. And I now I'm too. stinking <laughs> and rethinking. Yeah, and why does Lincoln, who we thought, you know, played really well week one. Okay, they did. They're, they're going to go in there and beat Rio Hondo, who had lost the week before to Sinton. Sinton, 34-14. So, so, you know, I was shocked. Well, I was shocked. I don't not against Coach James and his right. team, but just shocked at they, what they did. I think here's the thing. I think that we had kind of the buzz on Lincoln a little bit because you know we uh, they'd been an underdog. They'd had some rough times, and they started to come on. They had that big win. So sometimes we get uh, we're victims of riding the wave of enthusiasm. Well, sometimes those things turn into a lull or a swell, and you go down again. Rio Hondo, on the other hand, for years has been one of the best sub 5A teams down here, so we shouldn't have been surprised. I think John Bush, that junior quarterback, has come on pretty well. Yeah. Yeah, they, they seem to be moving the ball well. They got some uh, guy named Hernandez and Ortega. They're supposed to be offense, defense players. They've been making a bunch of tackles in the secondary. You know they had the linebacker. You know they got Mendoza, they had two and a half sacks already. So, I mean, uh, 
the Bobcats are for real, man. That's going to be a great game in them and St. Joe. Yeah, and, you know, I really think if you if you look at it, Real Honda's playing with house money because everybody's like St. Joe's offense, St. Joe's offense, and now they're defense. But Real Hondo, you know, they, they're going to be riding that wave that they had last week where yep. nobody's really thinking we're going to win. And they've got good defensive players. They have had for years. I know that program focuses on defense, uh, not to the exclusion of offense, but it's known as a defensive team. No, this is a sub-5A game of the week. I guarantee it. Now, St. Joseph, I told you about their kicker, right? Ka-o-ache, I don't know how to say his name, but he's a big, solid-looking kid. He's got a great leg. He's a weapon. He, he's a touchback machine. Yeah. When St. Joe scores, which is often, uh, you don't get a return on them. So they're going to start from the 25 no matter what, which is great. Uh, their defense played a lot better. And I'll tell you, we talk about Kai Money, all right? He's a great player. And this Mario Garcia, blah, blah, blah. But Bernie, man, Bernie, weekend of Bernie, that, like I said, that guy's got 13 catches, and he plays defense. I saw him make a great block to spring one of those cats on a long run. For my money, he is in the running for the all-purpose player of the year. The dude can do it all, man. Yeah. Yeah, I really like him a lot. Well, I mean, you know, you're going to have to have a total team effort, especially in taps if you want to go far because, you know, and they've got high expectations for this team. So, you know, it, they – this will be a great win to get. Yes. It's a great win to get. It's a great game to play because the kids are going to be in against the playoff perennial, a contender for the championship every year. And so you get to see who's going to do what to whom. See, sometimes a kid will go bananas against a team that's not that great. But then some of the guys become shrinking violets or they're a little bit loath mm -hmm. to turn it on. We'll see who the money players are, and I don't mean to make a play on words, but that's too obvious there, yeah. right? It's a fascinating interplay. What will Rocky James and them come up with? Are they going to spy him? Are they going to do this? Are they going to take away Bernie? What are they going to do? It will be a fun week of machinations, scheming, plotting, and, and planning out there in Rio Hondo. And I wish I could go see that game. It's over in Rio Hondo. Uh, okay. 2-0. Two 2-0 and o. Two and o is the theme. Yeah. Mac Allen Rowe is 2-0. Mm -hmm. let's, bring, let's bring back the voice from the past. Nicky Rowe! Oh, yeah. Warriors! That Remember that guy in that video? Yeah, Ray Leal, who, by the way, moved back to the Valley. He's yeah. now living in Harlem. We're going to have Ray. to get him back on the show, man. That yeah. guy was a... Technician Deluxe. Now, I texted Bobby Flores after the game. I was at the game. I texted him afterwards. I go, what's with you with, with you Flores boys? You just, you just want to win all the time? Yeah, what's and up? He sent me a picture of him, his two brothers, and his father. You know, But, you know, uh, his other brothers. At Some PSG great basketball right? players in the yeah. day, man. Yeah, and, uh, you know, his brother is the coach at Mack High. His first season, they, you know, they go to the Sweet 16. Mm -hmm. you know, Ryan. Yeah, Ryan. And, you know, you, look, this road team is way different. Way different than what we've seen in the past because – they're trying to establish the run, and they are, but they're they're also throwing it, and their defense is playing exceptionally well. I mean, they're and they're not hurt like they were last year. I like Jesus Sanchez, man. He's the new Doak Walker. Mm -hmm. Remember Doak Walker? Yeah. He'll run it, and he'll catch it, and he'll kick it. Yeah. That guy's kicking field goals. He's punting for a 39-yard average, and he's completing 70% of his passes. Okay. Ding, ding, ding. They got the receivers, right? Uh, defensively, I think they played a lot better football the first two weeks. I knew about about that out of the safety. And Nate Hernandez. I knew about those guys, Delgado. But here's two new guys you need to know. Rick Oliver and Eric Puente. Where do these guys come from? They're, they're making a lot of tackles. I got a hit. I got a hit that we're going to be playing. I don't know when we're going to be playing it right now when we're talking, but I got a hit that was incredible. I wonder which one it is. I haven't watched it yeah. yet. But here's the thing I want to I wanna say thanks to a lot of the coaches that have gotten on Max Preps. Yes, thank you. Because I'm not saying that your kid won't make the All-Valley team if he's not on Max Preps. But the more we can see the numbers, the more we can look at, at film, then we get to see who's doing what to whom. So it doesn't hurt your chances. Yeah. I've noted Harlington's back on it. Roe is on it. Some teams that haven't been on it in the past are on it. Hey, man, beautiful. I got PSA North sending me it. Oh, that's week. great, man. Yeah, you got to remember, you know, uh, we're, we can't, not, we're not trying to sell newspapers, you know. Right. Uh, sorry. Uh, but, Damn. you know, we're not selecting people from different towns just because we need to sell something. Right. We are. You know, we, when we I'm select, looking for we the best of the best, man, and if I can see your kids' numbers, then that gives me a better indication to try to adjudicate down the road, and it's always tough to do, man. Yeah. But, I, but I will note that I think there are more teams on Max Preps than ever before, and, man, if we can get that other third going, shoot, we're going to be in, just, in business. we got to fix, fix some of the roster so I don't look stupid during highlights. It allows me to cheat, though, because, you know, the thing is I can't watch every game and I can't be at every game. Wouldn't that be a yeah. treat? Anyway, so I thought I'd mention that. All right. But they're going against Porter. Porter didn't play bad. No. They didn't play bad. They just played a really good uh, um, – God, who they play? Uh, who did Porter play? Hannah? They played. Uh, Hannah beat him pretty good, 35 yeah. 13 on Saturday, didn't they? Yeah. Saturday. And Hannah, look, I told you about Jaime Gonzalez. He had 206. 168 when I saw him, 206. Hannah's not bad, man. No. I, I really feel like, you know, they have a chance. Obviously, an uphill struggle in that district, but they're decent. Porter, uh, you know, will come back into that 5A district. Uh, you know, they can't ride the wave off of that. Uh, 
playoff appearance from last year, but they got to get back on, on track, as it were, because they don't want it to be a one-hit wonder. Because in the past, Porter would be bad for a while, they make it, and then they go back to being not so good. I know those kids and Coach Campos want to be a consistent contender, so let's see what they can do against Roe. What about uh, staying in Brownsville? Uh, I saw Lopez play. And, you know, it's been a while for Lopez. Yeah. Okay, I'm going to tell you the truth, and they know it. It's been 2006. Oh, so. And they talked about it. They talked about it. Coach Starkey talked about it. I was so happy for those guys. Look, you were down there with us. Yeah. I mean, I was down there with you, me, with him, whatever. Yeah. When you see a team that has struggled, and its kids keep on hanging in there, and they finally get a win, man, the joy, the exuberance, and the sheer passion that comes out, that was the best, man. I was yeah. really excited for that. It just... It made me feel good. It's like, this is what football is all about. Yeah, it wasn't a marquee game, Lopez against Ed Merck High, but you know what? I enjoyed it. I thought it was great. Uh, both teams had chances to take it and give it, and they kept giving it and giving, taking it back. Lopez got it in the end. That little number one, Echeverria, a soccer player, he is phenomenally quick, man. He's, a, he's, a, he's Blake Klein plus quick. I mean, that guy's a water bug. He had some big plays. He had one big play called back. You know, and I give it up for Coach Stark after the game, you know, hugging his coaches, saying, the hey, best. hey, your first win, you know, like to the D.C. Yeah. You know, look, you give it up for that because, you know, if you've ever been, like, uh, on a team that hasn't been winning, it feels pretty good when you get that first one. And things can get nasty between people if you don't over a long period of time. I ain't saying that's the way it was there, but occasionally, you know. So, no, I thought it was a real genuine display of emotion that you need in the game, right? Respect the game, and they do. He should be hugging the D.C. They ain't gave it 125 yards against the Bobcats, yeah. man. They did a phenomenal job on defense. Yeah, and, uh, you know, they, they now they moved to 1-1. One one. Uh, Got PSJ playing, Memorial. And they're 0-2. And, and this is a, it's a tough, uh, as I take one of yours, uh, lick. For it's Memorial. a tough lick right now, man. They're not doing very well, and I think they have more talent than that. And I know the coaching staff is great. So it, it's, it's not do or die. Their back's turned against the wall, but they're tired of this mess. And so Lopez better look out. Coming off of that win, uh, you know, 15-13, I believe it was. Was it 15-13? Yeah. yeah. Uh, and, and Edinburgh had a chance at the end. They got a turnover at the 14-yard line, man, with about a couple of minutes to go, and they couldn't move the ball. Lopez came up with some big plays, and then – a pass into the end zone and it went off the kids' hands, and boy, Edmund High was this close. I felt they showed some positive signs. We're going to talk about them in a minute against Palmview. But come back to Lopez. You've got to be ready, okay? Because Memorial is mad, and that's a mad nest of Hornets. I think it's going to be a good ballgame. I really do. Now, PSU Memorial is traveling to Sam's for that game, so you know, you're, you know, you're on the road. But hey, you know what? Uh, when you're when your back's against the wall, it doesn't matter. They could play in a parking lot, but the Wolverines want to get a win, and they don't want to go 0-3. I think they have the talent to make it happen. But I have to admit, again, repeat, I was not surprised but pleasantly uh, pleased with the way Lopez came out, man. They didn't quit, and when I saw those kids win the game and they were jumping around like it was a Super Bowl, man, I went home happy. Yep. Not, and unhappy for Edinburgh. But happy for Lopez, man. I mean, give me a break. A team that's been 18 and 70 over the past, the span, it's good for them to get a win, man. Let's yeah. see if they get another one. Yeah. All right. And uh, the next game we're going to talk about, one of these teams is going to go 0-3. And uh, you know what? When I was looking at this a few weeks ago, I would have said Edinburgh is probably going to be that team. But Palmview hasn't played well. No. No, they've given up a lot of points. They haven't scored. Just like PSJ Memorial. There is a team that has had better success in the recent past, and I expect them to come out with a great effort at home. Edinburgh High, they got a workhorse on Nathan Mottos. Okay, he started the year at quarterback. Now he's a running back. Alonso was a quarterback. Shows some potential. He had a rough night against Lopez, but that was largely because Edinburgh lost two offensive linemen to injuries. They were gassed, man. They had six guys go out. There was no room on the training table. They were laying them out like a deer in the World War I, man. It was pitiful. So I hope that a lot of those kids can come back because, you know, the offensive line had shown improvement. And when you have a new quarterback, and when you're trying to move the football, which they did not do that well against Lopez, you need a full complement of offensive linemen. Mm-hmm. And they don't uh, they don't start district out on a good note either because they play economies the first week so of, of district yeah, play. Yeah. So you know this is one of those wins you want to get. You know you would have liked to get that Lopez win. It was very close. You need this win because you know district. You want to go into district with your head uh, a little bit higher than normal. Well, if you remember correctly, we said that we had a feeling Edinburgh was going to get a win in non district, and it was going to buoy that team's confidence. It was going to let them walk around the halls not skulking around. Uh, has not happened yet. Not saying it won't happen, but I think it's important for them to play as well as possible and possibly steal that win over in Palmview. They, they need it. Yeah, I think so, too. Mm. Uh, now, Lincoln goes in and loses to, yeah, yeah. to Rio Hondo, and they're going to play Donna North, who's 1-1. One and one. 
You know, both teams are one on one. It's gonna, it's, it has a different feel now. Yes, it does, because down in North, they're showing they can move the ball. Who's going to tackle Dominic Ochoa? You better bring three or four guys. Yeah. 167 the first week. I didn't see what he got last time, but I think it was pretty much. Mm -hmm. uh, that team is coming, man. They, you, know, you know, the Sherryland Pioneer dance, the Donna Donna North dance, the Vela against everybody else dance. Uh, this is their third year. They, well, it, it turns out, as you say, to have a different flavor of a game. I think it's very even right now. Yeah, I do too. Who is Lincoln? Are they the team that was great the first week? Or, or they that team that lost to Rio Hondo. I don't think they played poorly to lose to Rio Hondo, but you know, they, they want to make sure that people still have them in, high in the conversation. Yeah. That's an important game for them on the road. Yeah, and, and for Donna North, I mean, this, uh, they get this win right there, and it just, it just feeds their appetite for, uh, for winning and it go right into district. And it, not only it feeds in the district, but it starts building that buzz for the Donna game because mm -hmm. they're looking at Donna getting 134 yards in the game. They get more uh, than that from one guy rushing. Yeah. And so they're starting to think, yeah, man, see, we're going to get you guys this year. That's going to be a great game. Yeah. That's going to be some hitting going on. Okay, Rivetta, PSGA. Rivetta uh, has still run the ball very well. Uh, PSGA is an offensive power right now. Trey Wajardo, I want to repeat that kid's name. They got Almaguer, but they got him. Uh, Wajardo's had some big numbers, man. He's a, he's a very active player. And those are young kids, man. Those are not seniors we're talking about. Yeah, two TDs last week. Right, PSGA, uh, Mercedes. San Benito, Lyford, a lot of teams with young talent. I'm going to make me an all-sophomore team one of these days because, yeah. man, I'll tell you what, some of these cats from the Bears will be on it. Uh, I think they have a pretty good chance at home to beat Rivetta, but you know what? If we learn anything in high oh, school Josh. football, do not pick against Rivetta. Uh, you know, I think that they have a decent chance to hang in there, but, boy, they better be able to score, mm -hmm. you know? I don't know if they will. All right, Hannah, we talked about admission. Uh, Mission could be one and one, right? They played yeah. the vets pretty good. And they're putting some points up. It's yeah. not like they're not able to score. I mean, first week, yeah, they did struggle against PHA. Nine. But, but it seems like everybody right now is. Yeah. You know, but, uh, Got 35 against vets, man. Uh, Even though Delgado goes out with an injury, the Eagles still find a way to score 35. They're playing a Hannah team with that good kid, Gonzalez. I told you about that running back. I think, uh, and it was, this was his game. Remember a couple of years ago, it didn't come off because of the weather, lightning or something mm -hmm. such. Uh, that should be a good football game, too, man. I know that Corey Detman wants to get a win, but so does Hannah's guy, man. So, hey, let's see what happens. Yeah, and yeah. it's going to be interesting, you know, because uh, I'm amazed by what he's been able to do with the passing game because, you know, for a while, they didn't really do that much on the offensive side. Right. Yeah, so. absolutely. Yeah, 35. Okay, PSJ Southwest and Gruya. What I tell you, Gruya is going to come back. 48 points against Raymondville. Uh, they look real good. Now they play a PSJ Southwest team that is one and one but they've got some running backs, too, man. They had a ton of yards. Like Corona is one of those guys. They, they always tend to come up with running backs. You know why? Because it's the old Bears. Yeah. And PSJ used to have five or six running backs. You get 50 or 60 each. One of them would bust for 100. Uh, Every uh, one of them would run to the right side because they'd always run to uh, Coach Rios' side. <laughs> yeah, yeah. yeah. But uh, – it's incredible what they're doing, and they played a tough CC Betts team, and we don't even know anything about them. We don't them know team. anything about them except if they keep winning. Yeah. So, I mean, you know, until they get beat, I think LaFerrier has them this week. Yeah, yeah LaFerrier against Vets, uh, Progresso at Santa Rosa. Santa Rosa scored a lot of points, man. They beat the heck out of LaVia. That was surprising. Yeah. I wasn't expecting that. Boy, LaVia's given up 80-something points in two games. Mm -hmm. They get back on it with a Santa Gertrudis team. Yeah. Uh, they used to be called, what would they used to be called? Oh, uh, I can't remember. Corpus Christi Academy. I mean, they've changed names. Anyway, they lost to Banquete by, or who? They lost to Banquete by one, but then they beat St. Joe. Victoria St. Joe. Victoria. All right, hold up. We're not trying to get uh, Philip yeah, mad at us. Yeah, game. yeah. So, you know, that's a decent squad, man. Now, LaVia's got to get a win, man. The Cardinals, you know, they traditionally have been, and I wouldn't say a powerhouse, but they've always been competitive. So after getting beat by their rival like that, let's see how they can bounce back on the road. Now, speaking of bouncing back, Lyford and Raymondville both lost last week. This is the Cotton Bowl, or the, I used to call it the Battle of Wilson County. The Cotton Bowl, to me, is a relatively new nickname. But that's okay. Whatever it is, when you go up to that game, man, the people got their belts and their hats. They're walking around spitting everywhere. I think it's great. It's the best thing in the world. I've yeah. seen it more, than, more times than I can remember, and it's always fun. Yeah. Non-tobacco. Non, non, uh, oh, that's yeah, right. Yeah, yeah. You know how that goes. That's not allowed on school grounds. Uh, <laughs> what about Lifer? They scored one touchdown against St. Joe, and the kid's name is uh, Frankie Moreno. He was supposed to be a very good all-purpose player. Uh, the new quarterback's name, Chase Hinojosa. So they, they've stepped it up with some new guys. They get this sophomore Posas that's played well. There's big tackles on Brownell. That's a little fire plug. I think he's a sophomore, too. So, uh Lifer's looking all right. I mean, you know, St. Joe's a good team, man. There's no shame in that. I yeah. think they would like to score more than seven. We talked about the over-under of 100. We got being fools yeah. on this show, man. 
Well, you know, and they're going to play Raymondville. Raymondville's a tough team. They're just trying to, right now, they're, they're treading water trying to find themselves. And, They've uh, given up a lot of points, man. Yeah. And so let's see those young kids hold the line, hold their water and hold the line and make a much better effort. I predict that they will. LaFerry at Vets, that's a tricky foe. What about Hidalgo and Port Isabel? We were talking Hidalgo up, and Valley View gets a win against them. Yeah. Um, you know, but they are playing up a level on that one. You know, and Valley View's got numbers, and, you know, uh, you know, that's a battle. That's a neighborhood battle. Yeah, I mean, really. Viera de Vecino right there, man. Yeah, and uh, you know, Hidalgo, they shocked us in week one, even though Coach Judy, you know, Coach Judy texted me. Uh, yeah, yeah. You know, nice. And, and uh, texted me again when I picked, and I kind of picked against them against Valley View. Yeah. They were supposed to be Bulletin. Mm, yeah, right. Yeah. But, you know, it, it look, these are manageable games. PI is, is always going to be tough. Without Silva, though, I'm not, yeah. he was hurt. I don't know if he's out, but Aguilera is in, a sophomore. Uh, Ordunia's had a bunch of good runs so far. Yeah. This Bodie kid, who is this cat? Chris Bodie, right? Bobby Linebacker. Bobby. Yeah, he's made some good plays so far. Uh, Hidalgo, you're not sure what to expect, man. They, they're, they're threatening to be good. Yeah. You know what I mean? Port Isabel is hanging on, toeing the line. I, I still feel like – now, look, that, that Lopez game, that we were like, oh, it's only Lopez – Lopez has played better, which means that P.I. overtime win over Lopez all of a sudden takes on a different complexion. That's, better. That's a better win than it used to be. Yeah. Uh, you know, look, I, I look at this game, and I think he'd always play with house money because I still think they're a year away. Mm -hmm. They've already got that win this year. I think they can still get a couple more. Uh, but uh, it's a tough game. It's a tough P.I. game, but I think it's a necessary one. Hey, in the old days when those two teams would play, they'd break helmets. Mm -hmm. They don't particularly care for each other. Back in the back in the back in the day, P.I. scored some big-time wins over Hidalgo, and they ain't never forgotten it. So every time they get a shot at them, they want to take it to them. I think it's a good football game, bound to be physical. Maybe not the 33 penalties we saw at Vela and Eckhouse. I hope not, anyway. Or the brawl that we saw at uh, Edinburgh North and Sherryland where the referee's hat got knocked to the ground. Yeah, that was a crazy thing, man. Yeah. And it was a quarterback sneak, and all of a sudden it looked like a cage match in there. And I hope we don't see that again. All right, segment two down the drain. Uh, see, I told you we we're going to have fun on this thing, man. I mean, everybody always says, well, is, is it going to be a good It's always a good year. It's football, ain't it? It's the show, ain't it? We'll be back. Enough said. <laughs>